hello Jim and thanks for joining me today. Can I ask you to start by telling me about your background and your current role? Yeah, um, my background is essentially as a bureaucrat or yep. to put it more positively as a payer. Um, I worked for many years in the Department of Health and the NHS um, and up for the first half of the 90s up, up to 1997 I was head of the pharmaceutical industry branch in the Department of Health. Mm -hmm. So I was responsible for the UK's um, price control scheme, the, the PPRS. Uh, I was responsible for the NHS drugs budget which in those days was about six or seven billion pounds. And I also represented the UK on pharmaceutical issues at the European Commission. So I had a lot of contact with my counterparts from okay. the other health ministries around Europe. Um, and then I moved into consultancy and I've been in consultancy for about 15 years now. Um, <clears throat> for the last nine years with Bridgehead International where I'm Director of Global Market Access Strategy, so uh, overseeing our market, market access activities uh, globally. The main focus of that work is established markets, Europe and the US, um, yeah. but increasingly we're also seeing interest from our clients in uh, emerging markets uh, uh, and uh, increasingly we're focusing on on those markets okay and um, what opportunities do you see for a market as dynamic as China presenting to pharma well um, looking at things from a global perspective <clears throat> I think it's fair to say even before the, the sort of current financial crisis there was something of a, a shift in the balance of commercial activities from the established markets to the newer emerging markets. Um, clearly, China is one of those. Uh, potentially, it's the largest. In, in actual uh, sales now, it's probably uh, the largest and, and the potential is enormous. Yeah. Particularly now that we're uh, facing uh, quite difficult economic times, uh, you, you might say that the engine of growth in the world economies, in the world economy is the uh, uh, emerging markets. China is clearly part of that and certainly for pharmaceutical companies where historically we've seen growth in the range of sort of uh, 6 to 10 percent in emerging markets, that's no longer the case and I think uh, we're talking, we're not talking about recession and um, the great thing about the pharmaceutical industry is that it seems to be pretty much recession proof. Nevertheless, we're seeing growth rates coming down to something of the order of two to four percent in the in, in the established markets, which is a lot lower than historically we've been used to. Um, and it's the emerging markets and China in particular that now embody the growth potential. So you know, from that perspective, I think it's it's very significant, and uh, uh, you know, we we can still look towards growth at 10% plus in those markets. So increasingly, they're the the engine of growth in the pharmaceutical industry, uh, and increasingly important in terms of uh, overall share of the pharmaceutical market. Great. And what would you consider to be the key challenges to market access in China? I think as a, uh, uh, as a market, it's very different from the markets that the pharmaceutical industry is used to, the established markets. Um, I, I think the, the key challenge probably is that the balance of, of products is, is different. And while there are opportunities for um, new medicines, high-priced new medicines, uh, for the most part, what we're talking about is uh, a generic market and it's a market where we can expect growth to be driven by generics as well. So uh, 
really a quite different market. That's not to say there aren't opportunities for high priced products, because there certainly are. But that's not the key area of growth in that market. And I think it's posing a challenge for pharmaceutical companies. And I think we're starting to see uh, in uh, big pharma companies something of a shift here towards uh, a broader perspective on um, their product range. So looking not just at uh, the, uh, the, the patent protected products, but also at what uh, uh, one of the companies calls the heritage brands. In other words, established brands that maybe have lost exclusivity, um, yeah. but still have very substantial sales. And I think that's very important in China. And also to um, getting involved directly in the generic market. Uh, which historically is not something they've tended to do. So I think, you know, partly driven by China and other emerging markets, uh, big pharma companies are um, modifying their uh, approach to their portfolio. Okay. And how do you see new healthcare reform and new pricing regulation in China impacting on market access in this area? Well, I think there are two... Um, not quite contradictory, but uh, uh, two uh, separate um, uh, elements here. Um, one is healthcare reform. One of the aims of healthcare reform, uh, quite clearly, is to expand coverage in terms of population. So uh, up until now, we've seen a situation where the urban population has had at least basic health care coverage, whereas in the rural areas that's been much less the case. The urban population is, of course, growing rapidly, but even so, uh, the, the majority of the Chinese population is still rural. So I think one of the key elements is expanding coverage to a much broader uh, population. Uh, and clearly, you know, when you're talking about uh, um, expanding coverage to another half billion people, that's not insignificant. Um, but the other thing is, uh, as, it, as coverage expands and as the, the, the government, whether at uh, uh, a regional or at a national level, takes more responsibility for um, coverage, including meeting some of the costs of coverage, then um, inevitably pressure on price is going to grow. And I think that's part of the reason why uh, I would see uh, generics as a key sector uh, and, and you know, maybe heritage brands as a part of that. Um, and I think that that's where the growth will be focused because of pricing regulation, uh, which will limit the access, won't prevent, but will restrict the access of higher price medicines. Okay, and um, what trends have you noted in price and reimbursement policies in China? Yeah, that's uh, quite a, 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 a difficult one to answer. Um, I mean, I think the sort of the two trends that I've just referred to are the key ones. One, one is extending coverage, and uh, the other is uh, a more systematic uh, uh, approach to uh, pricing with a view to minimizing additional cost. Um, it, it, that has to be put in context because uh, in European markets, for example, when you talk about cost containment, effectively you mean freezing expenditure on pharmaceuticals at around the level it is now. In China, it's certainly going to continue increasing and increasing at a healthy rate. Um, yeah. But nevertheless, there will be limitations on uh, what you can achieve in terms of uh, price if, if you want broad market access. Yeah. And how do you see stakeholders in countries such as China differing from those in developed markets? Well, um, <clears throat> if you put markets on a spectrum, as it were, yeah. uh, I mean, the key, the, the key difference in stakeholders is the extent to which patients, individual patients, are 
um, stakeholders in a, in a financial sense uh, and the extent to which um, health insurance or uh, government bodies of one kind or another are the key stakeholders. In, in, in the developed markets, the expectation is that for most patients, most of the time, the vast bulk of the cost is made, met by third-party payers through insurance or tax-based systems, um, and uh, the patient is a, is a minor stakeholder. And in that context, you're looking mainly at um, national and regional stakeholders as the, the, the key stakeholders. Um, in, uh, sorry. Uh, in the uh, emerging markets, if you go to the other extreme, and probably India is sort of at the other end of the spectrum, where the third party payment is very limited, there's very little private health insurance, the state has a minimal role in, in paying for healthcare generally or medicines in particular and this is actually out-of-pocket payment. Well, China is somewhere between those, and it's moving along the spectrum towards um, the more developed market end of the spectrum uh, quite significantly. So it's, it's further along that spectrum, for example, than maybe Russia is um, yeah. in terms of uh, um, I I I insurance or, or um, regional and, and national government accepting responsibility for um, health care and for, for, um, for, for medicinal products. Okay. And um, India and China are both strong emerging markets. Which do you see as the stronger contender in terms of moving ahead in pharma and why? Well, let, let's define our terms a bit. If we mean in terms of as a pharmaceutical market, yeah. I have no doubt that in the short term, China is by far the stronger. Um, okay. I, I think, you know, their, their policies uh, are directed towards investing in health care, improving access to health care and so on. Uh, and I think that's uh, uh, a key driver of the growth in the market, along with economic growth, which of course is important too. Um, India has still what by uh, uh, developed market standards would be pretty healthy economic growth. Um, but in terms of health care, it's much less developed. And uh, um, uh, I think it's some way from starting to make the, uh, uh, the strides in terms of uh, healthcare coverage that China is already making. So uh, I think it's a, it's a much more, uh, much messier, more difficult place to do business uh, in terms of uh, the pharmaceutical market than China is, and will be for, for the foreseeable future, I think. Okay, Jim, well, very thank you very much for your time and for your insights. It's been very interesting. PharmaForum.com is the dynamic online information and discussion portal for the pharmaceutical industry.